Hello every and welcome to the last bit of daily upload don't worry I'm not gonna stop posting but I will be having some relaxed day with no longer ado let's begin. Nusutafu, Japan. Everything was so easy for Nko Midori. Despite birthing an absolute waste of space it all shined in her favor every single time. Her shitty thing had a quirk now and after two more years, she would be able to collect on all the hard work she put into raising it. Sitting on her couch Nko despite the early hour was already at the bottom of a whiskey bottle. Huh. Almost there Inko. Too bad it isn't here so I could hurt it some more. Ah those were the days. Leaning her head back and co-side contently as an almost nostalgic expression crossed her face. While one would associate making a face like that by remembering the times they had fun nights out with their friends the only things that came to her mind were nothing of the sort. Its screams are like music to my ears. Inko wasn't remembering the times she had fun with Mitsuki nor the litany of men she had sex with after Hisashi left. No it was all centered around the torture she had inflicted on it. That it being her son Izuku Midori. Thinking about it had Inko wanting to grab a knife and make a request to Yue so Izuku could come back to her home if only for a few hours. That option got more enticing as she grabbed another bottle of alcohol before she started fishing around in her pockets but before she could pull her phone out and dial a number a loud knocking was heard at her door. Groaning Inko got up making her way to the door of her home, who the fuck is it? Swinging the door open Inko saw the body and face of what to her was a very attractive man. Inko Midoriya. Speaking out the man took his hat off allowing Inko to get a clear look at him. Inko Midoriya. Speaking out the man took his hat off allowing Inko to get a clear look at him. Inko seeing the man immediately smirked as seductively as she could. Her waist of a son could wait for the man in front of her took priority. Hello, handsome yes I'm Inko Midoriya can I help you? Leaning on the door frame Inko tried to seduce the man appearing as sexy as she could even unbuttoning two of the buttons on her shirt, though the man's face quickly turned disgust filled before it was wiped away. I'm Detective Namasa Tsukachi with the Musutafu Police Department could you please come with me to the station? Waiting patiently Namasa saw Nko freeze for a minute before she spoke though the way she gritted her teeth told him she was definitely angry. Fishing into his coat he grabbed handcuffs though he didn't bring them out. Oh, is there a problem? Her fist trembled. She was afraid, rage-filled, and downright ready to murder. That piece of shit. After all, I have done for him, allowed him to live, eat my leftovers this is how he repays me. Gritting her teeth Nko looked at the man waiting for her answer. No there isn't a problem, that is if the report we received is false. Narrowing his eyes Naomasa saw Nko's fist clench even tighter the veins on her hand popping through her skin. Nko couldn't believe this but quickly she calmed herself down they didn't have anything and were they really going to believe a crybaby who could barely do anything right over her. No that was impossible so unclenching her fist Nko's smile returned similar to her son she had practiced this one though not for faking happiness but for innocence. Okay, detective, please lead the way. Maintaining her smile and co-complied with Naomasa even when he told her he had to put her in handcuffs per standard protocol. Everything Nko did was for the faking of her complete innocence. The police had no evidence of any crime they claimed she did. Though Nko knew one thing when she got her hands on Izuku she wouldn't just hurt him no, she'll make sure he never told anyone anything ever again. Nko really regrets her decision to not slice Izuku's vocal cords as a child. Though she would fix that mistake once this was all over. The car ride was silent all the way to the station. Inko sat handcuffed in the back of Naomasa's own custom car. Though this didn't stop her advances as she tried to blow on his ear whispering sultry words all the while making innuendos about being handcuffed. Naomasa, however, kept a straight face in fact inwardly he wanted to throw up. The smell of her breath along with her disgusting words only furthered this feeling. Eventually, they arrived at the station and after getting Inko out of the car Naomasa escorted her to an interrogation room. Sitting her down Naomasa uncuffed Inko only for him to cuff her back to the table confusing the woman though before she could speak Naomasa did, stay here. Not saying another word Naomasa left the room and the invading white room only had Inko Midoriya inside as Nezu's request was filled. Everyone wake up the day is about to begin. Nezu's voice cut throughout the spectator room as the teachers and staff slowly rousing in their sleep the only one to fully wake up right away was Aizawa though that may have been because of an early phone call he had just received. Yes, I, I don't think it's a good time now. No he hasn't been injured the students are in a war game scenario. Can't you promise her that she could come another time? Fine I'll speak about it with Nezu. Ending the call Aizawa pinched his nose his eyes looking at the monitor at which showed a sleeping Izuku. Maybe she can help. Aizawa anything you would like to share. Nezu out of his chair and grabbing a mug of tea looked at the teacher before deciding to get the man a mug of coffee as well. Handing the cup Nezu waited as Aizawa took a sip. Yeah Mandalay called it appears that Midoriya has a new visitor wishing to see him. Mandalay said he. Huh. What's going on? Is it morning already? Cutting Aizawa off present Mike stretching spoke aloud causing everyone else on the staff to wake up all of them groaning as they did so. Shutting his mouth Aizawa looked at Nezu who only nodded. Well glad to see you're all awake. Teachers, staff the second day of the war games had now begun. With a cheery voice, Nezu held his mug out towards the teachers who all took a second before looking at the monitors seeing their students still sleeping though Vlad spotted Kanoko still awake barely clinging to consciousness while a vine cocoon took Ibarra's spot. 
Have any of them woken up yet? Questioning Nezu Midnight looked at every student before Nezu answered. No, not yet though they should be soon enough. Ectoplasm I suggest now would be the time to take Miss Hatsum to the game area. Nodding his head Ectoplasm got up but just as he was about to leave Power Loader spoke. Ectoplasm make sure to tell her to stay safe we don't know what Midoriya has planned she shouldn't be put in the crossfire. He's dangerous. Nodding his head Ectoplasm left but Toshinori raised an eyebrow. Power Loader what do you mean young Midoriya is dangerous? Narrowing his eyes at the support teacher he saw him about to speak until Aizawa cut him off. That's because he is. Aizawa, young Midoriya is not dangerous. He has the heart of a hero. Don't take the high road with me Toshinori. You called him a villain as well, you didn't defend him when he was accused, and just yesterday you were ready to intervene and fight him despite your quirk already being faded. Taking a sip of his coffee Aizawa heard only silence as he continued, Midoriya is dangerous and that's the truth, however, that applies to everyone in our classes, take Todoroki. For example, he could freeze or incinerate a person to death, yet just because he wasn't accused of being a traitor we all keep our mouths shut about the true lethality of his quirk. Leaning back in his chair Aizawa saw the teachers especially Toshinori and Power Loader have a look of guilt. This discussion will have to wait. The heroes have awakened. Cutting through Nezu gave the staff a way out as they looked to the screen seeing most of the class 1 and 1B waking up while Yuraka was in her bed Izuku having moved her after his escape. Watching everyone ectoplasm sounded over the comms. Nezu I dropped Hatsum off. I'm heading towards the hero HQ to pick up Kamori. Confirming he had heard ectoplasm. Nezu switched a monitor through the city before spotting the power loader's pink-haired student walking through the city streets with a large duffel bag. While most of the teachers kept their eyes on the monitors concerning the waking hero's power loader, Aizawa, and Nezu kept an eye on Mei watching as she came to a familiar apartment building. Raising an eyebrow power loader spoke, isn't that where Midoriya moved to? Yes it is but why is Hatsum going there, does she know? The staff watching Mei searched for an answer to why she would go specifically to that apartment but they couldn't focus on it as screams from the hero monitor echoed in the room. It seems that Kendo and a few others found Kinko's body and Ibarra's cocoon. Turning back to the other monitors on the heroes they saw most of them quickly getting dressed in their hero suits before running out the staff witnessing a collision between a few of the students as they rushed to the room. Nezu is ectoplasm there yet Kanoko looks as though she is about to drop. Concerned for his student Vlad kept looking at the screen as Kendo, Tetsu Tetsu, and Yui checked up on Kanoko before Kendo started speaking to Ibarra. He's almost there Vlad don't worry. If anything Ibarra should be the one to look out for. That being said now that this happened the heroes will be having a horrible time sleeping, Midoriya is being very thorough. How so? Questioning Nezu on his thinking Toshinroi turned to the principal who answered it quite simply. With Midoriya's childhood, to me at least it's clear what he is doing, he's making the hero team feel trapped, hopeless, and that he is around every corner. His bullying and abuse most likely had him feeling exactly what he is projecting to the heroes. Paranoia and fear, I must admit despite the torture I myself went through Midoriya's was exponentially worse. Taking a sip of his tea Nezu sat back as Uraraka finally arrived in the room the teacher's minds filled with what Nezu said. Each time Nezu complimented Izuku on his villainy and tactics the staff was thankful he had enrolled to be a hero. Though this was only the second day that fact scared them even more. Ibarra it's okay we're all here. Lucifer isn't here. And no H he's everywhere. T those green eyes. G god P please help me. Hearing everything the staff watched as Kendo tried to speak to Ibarra, he clearly panicked in shaky voice as she cried voicing through. Vlad clenched his fists one of the most composed of his students was breaking down in a way he had never heard or seen before. Midoriya, what have you done to her? Though it was unprofessional Vlad felt a small sense of anger enter his body as he said that in a low voice. Despite what Nezu had said before he couldn't help himself when he saw his students like this, and it was all because of Izuku. Vlad, his name being uttered the teacher turned to the voice only seeing Nezu sipping his tea while giving him a sidelong glance, though the message was clear. Calm yourself, Vlad. You knew of the stakes when you agreed to the game, don't take it out on Midori. Getting his message Vlad silently sighed before he turned back to the monitors. Nezu was right he shouldn't take this out on Midori the boy was just doing what it took to win. Keeping their eyes peeled they finally saw the hero team leader show up in the room however none of the staff seemed hopeful for Bakugo to step up. Hey, garden head get your ass up and stop crying like a bitch that shitty Deku may have killed that useless mushroom tip but you're alive so get your ass up. That one comment caused chaos to erupt within the room. Kendo almost stepping up to fight Bakugo while Ibarra retreated going silent only crying. Aizawa wasn't even embarrassed at Bakugo's reaction at this point he just viewed this as another mark to expel him. Or at the very least move him from his class and into another preferably with Hound Dog who speaking of which was writing down what he saw. The confrontation was getting heated if it carried on even more but luckily Kirishima who they all noticed looked almost as exhausted as Tsu and Kanoko. Stepping they saw Kirishima calming them down. A sense of relief that the boy had stepped in brought a proud feeling within Aizawa. His student was perfect for situations like these. But Aizawa still couldn't ignore the fact that a huge rift was forming in the team. Aizawa couldn't help but think this is what Midoriya wanted. There's activity where Midoriya is. 
pointing it out the teachers turned to Izuku who was stirring in his bed, turning on the audio unknowingly interrupting Aizawa's train of thought. The sound banging on Izuku's door was the sound that resonated in the room. They all focused on it when Izuku reached under his mattress grabbing his gun. Always prepared, isn't he? Hound Dog narrowing his eyes on Izuku marked something down. Do you blame the little listener? Plus the banging on the door would make me want to prepare a weapon too. Present Mike grabbing a water bottle took a large drink as Izuku made his way to the door. Nezu where's Mei? Isn't she in that apartment? Looking at the monitor and power loader Nezu kept quiet as Izuku reached the door slowly opening it before he was tackled to the ground by a figure. Spitting out his water present Mike yelled, what the hell? Did a hero find him? They could see it clearly until power loader spoke. No they didn't but. Mei, the staff was a bit shocked power loader especially but that only further increased when Mei leaned down capturing Izuku's mouth with her own causing Midnight to speak out, so they're together. What about your Raka? Tashinori was deeply confused asking the question Power Loader shared. You may not have noticed but the show of love he put on for your Raka was completely fake. Though Midoriya can act lovesick I know when something as pure as love is false. So why did he visit her last night as say all those things to her? He got exactly what he wanted. Midoriya is crafty, he used your Raka's love to get inside the hero building without triggering a whole scene. Not only that but it seems your Raka has no memory of Izuku knocking her out so that love is still real to her. Nezu could only shake his head. Izuku was proving that he really could be a nightmare. Izuku, I decided to join the game. Izuku's face of shock was all they saw before he quickly closed the apartment to his door that was left open. While Mei set her duffel bag down as Izuku turned to her the teachers hearing Izuku almost shout at her questioning what she was doing there until Mei essentially apologized even Power Loader was surprised Mei never really apologized for anything. From there the teachers watched as Izuku smiled saying it was alright for her to be there before Izuku walked to Mei pulling the girl into him as he made out with her and she felt him up. Most of the teachers looked away at this point, though Midnight and Hound Dog didn't shy away. Midnight was interested in their relationship and Hound Dog was as well though for a more therapeutic aspect concerning Midoriya's behavior. If he still allows Hatsum to get close it must mean there is still some trust he holds, only for those he views as worthy. Still watching Midnight told the teachers they were done making out and they looked back at the monitors as Mei spoke. Izuku we need to talk, I saw everything yesterday. Hearing Izuku and Mei go silent they all waited for her next words as Hound Dog watched worriedly. If she betrays him as well it may be the breaking point. So you have an opinion about it? No, not really. I don't care about what you did but I heard about your mom and everything else. Mei pulled Izuku into a hug while the teachers leaned forward. I am sorry I Izuku, your mom, that was horrible I didn't know you felt this way, your class, everyone, I I will want betray you. Hearing this from Mei the teachers couldn't catch a break. They had betrayed Izuku even after knowing him the whole year. And yet Mei who had only talked with Izuku a few times from their knowledge and had known about him being accused, stuck by his side even after watching what happened when most people the teachers included saw him differently. Power Loader side he was happy Mei despite how she usually acted was close to someone but the thought of Izuku using her invaded his mind yet he quickly put that thought away once he saw Izuku smile. Izuku really trusted Mei and it showed. The teachers all looked on, the couple trusted each other. Izuku showed a genuine smile one that even Tashinori who had seen the smile on his face when he gave Izuku OFA hadn't seen before. If the teachers were to put Izuku's fake smiles next to his real ones, they would have realized how idiotic they were thinking those were real. It was then that Mei started showing the gadget she brought with her some banter going between the two before the small device Aizawa saw Mei working on. And here is the most important baby. Taking out a small box Mei opened it to show a small disc confusing the staff power loader included he had never seen something like it. Mei, what is this? Here I'll show you. Grabbing the device the teachers watched as Mei placed it on his chest before Izuku still confused asked about it as Mei requested him to use one of his quirks. So Hatsum really did see everything. She must have built a camera into Midoriya's villain suit she was working on it. Power loader providing an explanation they all looked back at the screen watching as Izuku tried to activate his quirk though the teachers were surprised when it didn't activate instead Izuku clutched his chest in pain. In fact, his quirk didn't work until Black Whip came out of Izuku's arm, they didn't know that Izuku had to activate both of his quirks to even accomplish that. The disc when attached deactivates a person's quirk and if they try and use it a sharp pain will erupt from the device each time. I made that after a pair of quirk cancelling handcuffs I might have borrowed from the police station a while ago. Every teacher slowly turned to look at Power Loader who just put his face in his hands they all agreed to say nothing as Izuku voice sounded out. So let me get this straight you stole a pair of quirk cancelling handcuffs and made something that basically renders someone quirkless. It was one surprise after another. A device like Mei had made could absolutely shift the balance in hero society. If these were to get in the hands of someone villainous it would be devastating. Absolute powerhouses rendered quirkless. Mei had just furthered Midoriya's strength. Nezu had a feeling Izuku would use this to cripple the hero's power even more. Well, when you put it like that it sounds bad. No Mei that's perfect, I couldn't ask for any more useful than this. Once again they saw an almost devilish grin cross Izuku's face they knew whatever Izuku planned next it would be devastating. 
Hearing Izuku request May take the device off his chest they saw him gear up before leaving promising to see May afterwards. Keeping an eye on him they all saw him go to where a waste was who was screaming his head off in the villain lair hurt, scared and confused. Please, Ace, someone help me. Nezu could you please turn that down? Plaid's voice was filled with sadness as he said those words he couldn't stand to hear Oasis desperate pleas for someone to save him. His ankle and face isn't doing too well. There must be a fracture in his jaw. Inspecting through the monitor's recovery girl's eyes turned to the severely broken ankle Oasis had in his swelling jaw. Well Tetsu Tetsu did fall several stories and punch with a steel fist into his face. It's lucky that's all that happened though there has to be more injury. With his quirk Midoriya had to have done some damage. Placing his mug down Aizawa pointed out how lucky Awase truly was in this situation that was until Lucifer finally arrived. Awase, please be quiet this will be all over soon. Midoriya, let me go please. Struggling in the chair he was tied and Awase tried with all his might to escape but Lucifer didn't take that too kindly as he grabbed onto Awase's mouth putting pressure on the student's fractured jaw making Awase jump in his seta with pain jolting while he screamed. Awase I don't want to hurt you anymore but if you don't cooperate with me then you'll stay here and one by one watch as your friends. Classmates feel pain far more worse than yours. So what do you say? Vlad, he's your student. What do you say about this situation? The waist is strong, but with Midoriya, anything can happen. Answering Nezu, Vlad looked at the screen silently, hoping as a waist despite the pain he was in spit in Lucifer's face, though it only hit his mask. That wasn't very nice. Well, we still have some time, so why don't we negotiate? With his dress shoe, Lucifer stepped on Oasis's ankle while pressuring his jaw even more. Before he took his left hand palm striking Oasis in the stomach multiple times knocking the wind out of Oasis and eventually causing the hero to throw up though Lucifer stepped out of the way. This went on for a few minutes and each minute Oasis's resistance fell until all that was left was a broken boy who started crying. Now do you want this to end? You only need to do one simple task and deliver a message to your friends. The Oasis with no other option nodded his head and Vlad in the surveillance room side he hands folded as his student gave into Lucifer. They then watched as Lucifer put his hand to his ear. Nezu cleared the area around the water distribution plant. The hero building is going to experience a little rumbling as well. Understood he'll evacuate the students. Ectoplasm you know what to do. Speaking to Ectoplasm a monitor on the hero who was carrying Kanoko split into several clones of himself before they all jumped away. Alright Midoriya the area should be clear soon. He'll give you the okay when you can blow the charges. Lucifer then put his hands off his ear before grabbing a waist throwing the student over his shoulder like a sack of flour. This game just got harder, even more so. How so? Present Mike had no idea what was going to happen but Aizawa's warning gave clear sign that they should worry. Are any of you interested in ancient history? Well yes but what does that have to do with anything? Midnight answering being the history teacher herself looked at Nezu who continued. Well in ancient Japan there was no quirks, yet wars bloodier than what the heroes of today deal with were in abundance. Clans fought over territory and killed each other just for control and there was one man who was the most dangerous, Oda Nobunaga. He relished in conquering and war. Despite the amount of enemies that faced him his strategies made sure he won and the reason he was so feared was because of those strategies. Again how does this relate to what's happening right now? Well Midori had just requested to blow up two locations that being the water distribution plant and a part of the hero's headquarters which coincidentally is where their rations and gear are. So he taking away their resources. Vlad cutting and stated what he thought Izuku was clearly doing. Yes, Oda Nobunaga used strategies similar to this in almost every war he fought. He planned and made the terrain his to control. Midoriya is doing just the same both Oda and Midoriya are crippling their enemies by targeting the resources. Midoriya already planted a seed of doubt in the heroes within the citizens. But this move will only grow Midoriya's chances of winning as unlike the heroes Midoriya can steal whatever he needs. The heroes can't do the same. His tactics are scary luckily no one has thought of this today. Though they can target us using the media taking away resources needed on a daily basis like Midoriya has done would be far worse. Aizawa was inwardly grateful they saw this now. In fact everyone was if anyone was as remotely strategic as Izuku was this would be a problem. In fact Nezu was planning on making a plea to the Hero Association and government to take measures concerning this in the future. Eventually they saw Lucifer make it back to the street level several building away and though the Hero HQ was in the distance it wasn't that much. They watched as Lucifer placed a waist on the ground before he dug into his suit pulling out two detonators before placing them in a waist's hands and pressing his thumbs down and into the buttons before Lucifer pushed him forward. Walk and don't forget the message. With that command a waist dragged himself to the hero building while Lucifer with OFA active jumped to a large billboard before taking the snapier he carried off his back setting it up as he focused on the direction of the hero building. Speaking of which the teachers looked to the hero monitors seeing the classes all speaking to each other a fearful feeling clear in the air while they spoke Minta with head down was amongst the loudest at the dining room table. Guys maybe we should forfeit. Now Aizawa always knew Minta was very frightful and easy to cry in tough situations but the boy had gotten better but it seems Midoriya reverted him back to the time in the USJ. 
Kaminari yelled at his friend as the midget boy defended himself. Again the hero team was in an argument Mita's point of them taking Kanoko's place causing most of them to go silent until Tetsu Tetsu stepped up trying to raise everyone's spirit. Tetsu Tetsu is a good motivator along with Kirishima he's talented that's for sure. He's always been like that since day one in the class though Kirishima isn't that far off either Aizawa. Sorry to interrupt you too but Midoriya is making his move. Interrupting the two teachers Snipe's eyes never left Izuku's screen seeing as the villain was ready to fire while a waste on a different screen started getting closer to the hero building. A distraction. Snipe looked back to the hero screen watching as Tetsu Tetsu raised a glass of juice before Midoriya fired the glass Tetsu Tetsu was holding shattering by the impact before Izuku shot again taking Kaminari out with a headshot. Kaminari is out. Speaking through the comms Izuku's barrage of fire didn't stop even as the heroes panicked trying to get out of the line of fire. Shinso took to using his capture scarf to help bring a few of the slower ones down. The entire thing was chaos and the heroes weren't ready for it. They still have no preparation though it was sudden after the first three attacks Midoriya has pulled on the first three nights they should have learned to be on guard. While that's true Aizawa remember Midoriya is showing a side he has hidden they couldn't have expected a large change in someone they had seen as an innocent go lucky boy. Nezu couldn't blame the students Hell Toshinori was still in shock over his successor's change. Though Nezu had already accepted this Midoriya as the real one it seems the others are still clinging to someone who was dead. The sniper fire continued only for a few minutes until it stopped. Bakugu as expected was ready to rush out when Awase finally made it to the door of the hero building. He's there this will be bad. Ectoplasm are the areas clear I expect Midoriya to use the bomb soon. They're clear every student has been evacuated. Hearing that Nezu looked at Lucifer, Midoriya the bombs are ready for use, though even if they weren't you still would have used them wouldn't you? Not like I had a choice Nezu, Deadman triggers can't be disarmed from a distance. Lucifer on the screen grinned yet they could only tell by his eyes that what was coming would be exciting for him as he stood up giving a two-fingered salute to a nearby city camera. Looking back at a waist they saw the boy bang on the door with his head and after Shinso changed his voice using his hero gear they saw the boy get brainwashed before being told to enter and despite the trouble he went through a waste finally entered, building slowly before collapsing on the ground Sen rushing to him. The teachers all watched with anticipation as Sen check and a waste before the boy uttered some words to his friend. He said he would let me leave if I did this. He has a message for everyone. Enjoy the fireworks. Before Lucifer he momentarily put the sniper back down fired a large splot of fake blood splattering on Oasis's head and over Sin. Putting his hand to his ear Vlad was about to call the elimination when Oasis's hands dropped the detonators and large explosions happened in two places destroying Ectoplasm's clone that was still in the area and filling the common room of the hero HQ with smoke. The teachers all stayed silent as they looked on the only camera that had a visual on a student was the one on Izuku who strapping the sniper on his back activated OFA. Another day had started and Izuku wasn't going to wait. The cameras were still clouded in smoke. The staff couldn't see a thing other than Izuku moving from the billboard he was in. The audio for the Hero HQ wasn't much better a few students screaming along with the rushing sound of smoke was all that was heard. The teachers just waited. There wasn't anything they could do but they did question once they saw Izuku make no further attempts on attacking. Why isn't he rushing into the Hero HQ wouldn't this be the perfect time to strike? Midnight turned to her fellow teachers most of them nodding but Nezu didn't. Instead, he said nothing he just narrowed his eyes. He could attack, but that would be too easy. All this time he separates the heroes before he attacks. So he must have a motive if this happened in the real Musutafu. Someone would be running intel from the HQ, then again Midoriya may have some unfinished business. Turning his head Nezu looked at the monitor in Ibarra's room. The vine girl huddled over her vines threatening to have her retreat back into a cocoon. Look the smoke is starting to clear. Snipe pointing out the fact the smoke was indeed clearing had Nezu's attention drawn back watching as Yorazu along with a few others wearing gas masks walked through the smoke trying to help their classmates get gas masks on. Is everyone okay? Yoraka from the top floor called out. The staff could see just how distressed the girl was while. Bakugu who was still at the surveillance cameras saw Izuku's spot abandoned, and that anger only increased when Shinso yelled out. We're fine Kaminari and Awase are dead. That P-I-K-A-C-H-U knock off. G-R-R-R-R. That Deku must have planted the bombs last night. That bastard also blew up the water distribution plant. We have a fucking fire where the gear and food storage is someone get the fuck over there and try and stop it. Leaning back in his seat Aizawa wanted to see how his students handled the situation going forward. Once again they will be divided but with Bakugu's leadership will Izuku just pick them off again. Did you think any of their gear survived? Power Loader asked this question. Partly because he really hated the thought of having to remake all of the hero gear in suits. Not only that but from what he saw this morning he assumes May knows about the relationship between Midoriya and his class, so she most likely wouldn't want to help. I wouldn't count on it Power Loader. If you remember, the charges he placed were directly on the gear storage it would be a miracle if anything survived. Aizawa being the bearer of bad news heard a long sigh erupt from Power Loader. Of course, they kept their eyes on the screen as a small team consisting of Todoroki, 
Yayarazu, Ashido, and Kosai them working together to snuff the fires. Good. Those four are the most suitable for the job. Three of them can take care of the fires while Kosai can protect them. Thirteen had to give credit where it was due, as the four worked together just like how Thirteen thought they would. The teachers so far hadn't seen anything that had restored faith in the hero team but they could see slowly but surely they were starting to take this seriously. After the students took care of the fires, Mina searched the room trying to find anything that survived when they heard her. Guys this is bad. We only have a half day's worth of food left. Hearing this Midnight placed a hand on her chin asking a question out loud to Nezu. Nezu with the rations destroyed what do you think the heroes will do? Hard to say misses. Kayama if I were in this situation, Yagarazu would be the greatest asset. This mock city uses currency the exact same as out of the game so using Yagarazu I would have her print money so we can purchase supplies. Though I'm sure Midoriya realizes this so I'm sure even if our students thought of this it wouldn't be long until Yayarazu is eliminated. It was a solid plan. Though their students may not know, Yayarazu is the one person they should be safeguarding. Thought through Nezu's explanation of what he would do in the situation the teachers never took their eyes off the screen as Mina check on the hero gear per Yayarazu's request. It was their power loader side once more watching as some of the most intricate gear he had to create it were completely destroyed. Damn it Midoriya. Ignoring power loaders complaining they saw the rest of the hero team come into the room looking at their broken gear and more specifically Bakugo looking at his shattered gauntlet. Oh my this isn't going to go well. Midnight had already started to turn the volume down the teachers were thankful as just like they had anticipated Bakugo started yelling. Once I find that Deku, I'll fucking kill him. You four extras stay here and one of you get on the cameras I want to know where the piece of garbage is at all times. After Bakugo was finally done yelling the boy ignored his classmates who were putting on what remained of their gear as walked outside. The heroes who were ready followed after him, their attention directed to the smoke at the distribution plant. Bakugu then began giving orders the teams plotting up Kosai, Mina, Todoroki, and Yayarazu staying behind, splitting up the teams again. Why won't they learn? Groaning Aizawa pinched the bridge of his nose their classes were still making the same mistake every single time. Nezu wears Midoriya. Clicking through a few cameras Nezu zoomed into an alley watching as Izuku lifted a dumpster stashing his sniper. While it looks as though we may have another incident like last night on our hands, Midoriya is waiting by the water distribution plant. It took a minute or two but the hero team double-timed their response to the explosion as almost everyone used the rooftops to get there faster. While some had to cut through the streets before they did all they could to stop the fire some of the students taking positions to defend. Though the teachers noticed that the civilians who crowded the area didn't look relieved as the heroes showed up taking control. Am I Dorea works fast. The civilians don't even look happy the heroes are there. Vlad leaning back focused on the civilians. You are correct Vlad, that is indeed the case. With Midoriya's speech and the hospital incident it doesn't seem as though the heroes are a very bright ray of hope for them. So young Midoriya trying to snuff their hope out completely. Toshinori knew that villains often targeted moral as it made faith in heroes lessen such as the case with Bakugu's kidnapping by the League and his retirement. No I don't believe that's the case. To me at least it seems Midoriya doesn't want to snuff out the light of hope he just wants to replace it. Confused the teachers were all going to question what he meant when their comms went haywire and a voice sounded off into their ears. Hello, is this baby working? Oops wrong communication channel. Hatsum, putting a hand to his earpiece power loader called out to his student. Did you just hack into the comms? Turning to the monitor in Izuku's apartment they saw Mei sitting at her computer typing away. Yep sorry sensei but I have to talk to Izuku now bye. Mei's voice stopped as power loader turned to Nezu. Nezu I apologize I'll discipline Hatsum, I'll also kick her out of the comm channels. Going to a computer power loader was ready to forcefully shut Mei out until Nezu spoke. No punishment is needed nor do you have to stop her, let's see where this goes. Nezu smiled which didn't look good to the staff as power loader sat back down and Izuku on screen put a hand to his ear interrupting his intense thought process. As the teachers could see while Mei's voice came back though not directly in their ear and instead through the monitor watching her. Izuku, don't yell but I can help if you want. Confusion was evident in Izuku's eyes for a split second until it was quickly changed to acceptance. So even Midoriya isn't surprised by her actions. Why should he? Midoriya had been visiting Mrs. Hatsum quite often after the incident. Nezu how do you know that? Aizawa turned raising an eyebrow even he didn't know where Izuku tended to disappear to but apparently Nezu knew. I often look at the security cameras. After Kirijiri's infiltration through his quirk I always keep an eye on things and I had seen Midoriya walk into the support studio though I never looked further. Power loader surly you have seen him in there. Yes of course though when I did he was usually talking to me about a baby she had made. But after I left I never knew he stayed there long. Nezu looking at the monitors didn't say more. So it seems Hatsum was the only one to not have treated Midoriya as an outcast that must be why he has so much trust with her. Enough to place an important part of himself within her care with her doing the same. Hound Dog wasn't the only one who had thoughts about this development. Midoriya definitely has issues regarding trust, though he isn't forging to giving it but only under certain circumstances. Writing that down Hound Dog paid back attention to the screen as Izuku spoke. Nay, that would be great but how? 
It was then Neza was finally alerted of a breach within the system though knowing it was Hatsum doing so he let it slide ignoring the alert. As long as it wasn't the actual school of UA the Mock City was of no risk. Siphoning off their servers within the Mock City and the Hero HQ may gain control of the alarm system that alerts the heroes to attacks. Nezu are you sure you want to let this happen? Power Loader couldn't help but ask once again. I'm sure. I'm impressed however that Hatsum had breached our systems though I was alerted by it. Your student has more potential other than creating hero gear. Nezu had started taking a liking to May's skills the game was getting better by the second and while this was about Midoriya getting everything out of his system Nezu could enjoy it as well. While currently it seems every major building in the city is monitored by the alert system that is in the Hero HQ. And the team there is surveying the entire city searching for to you through the cameras. But I can make a false alarm and draw some of the heroes away. While May's plan was simple the teachers can see that even without any complexity they could admit it was a solid plan. The heroes couldn't not investigate the alarms and by extension the hero team will need to separate even more giving Izuku even better chances of attacking. Izuku on screen remained silent but every teacher knew he would take the opportunity as they would. Alright May first I need to contact Nezu. I'll contact you but prepare to send alarms to every bank, police, and fire station on the western side of the city. Will do. Hearing this Nezu already had his paw next to the earpiece as Izuku spoke to him directly. Nezu, I need you to clear the apartment buildings on the southern side of the city, I plan on letting loose. That can be arranged, we are having ectoplasm escorted the students out. Robots are still in play there. Nodding to ectoplasm who got up understanding as he walked out the room. Yet the staff were confused on why Izuku picked that area specifically. The teachers then watched as Izuku jumped to the roof of the building next to him looking over the edge. Before sending word to Mei to sound the alarms and after a second the teachers looked at the surveillance room which Eirazu was reciting and as the alerts popped on the screen continuously the girl panicked. So she still falls under pressure, I thought we fixed that. Aizawa shook his head the whole reason for the final exam was to build a sense of confidence under a tense situation for Momo yet the girl returned to her old ways. Aizawa it would be best to remember what they are currently dealing with. Midoriya came as a shock to us imagine them. You're right Nezu I just hoped even with Midoriya's change some of our lessons stuck with them. Aizawa crossed his arms as Yeirazu called out to everyone over the comms alerting them to the situation at the West District even though nothing was happening at all. Bakugo didn't take the news so well and again the boy started yelling commanding his team to move their asses while Todoroki was told to go to the water distribution plant to help with the fire. Aizawa why haven't you put a muzzle on that little listener? No offense hound dog. None taken though for Bakugo I do suggest we implement one. Hound dog even agreed with present Mike though Aizawa found it ironic he was saying that. Everyone you may want to watch this. Hearing Nezu they turned back watching as the students who weren't told to stay ran towards the western district Bakugu being last and the furthest behind as Izuku who hadn't made a move turned to where the explosions were coming from. Was he waiting for young Bakugu? Does he intend to take out the leader? Tashinori was confused as Izuku dug his hand into the roof he was standing on before ripping out a large chunk. No at least not yet. Narrowing his eyes Nezu watched as Izuku threw the chunk hitting Bakugu and sending the boy to the ground of a roof. Who the fuck did that? You're fucking dead. On the monitor Izuku just stared down at Bakugu Habwa's raging in the roof before Bakugu spotted him. Bakugu was ready to rush after Izuku but the boy ran using his quirk to boost his power. Bakugu yelling rushed after Izuku yelling for him to get back there. But as Izuku was running the reason why Izuku had told Nezu to clear the southern district made sense. He's luring Bakugu there, does Midoriya have a trap? Midnight questioned Izuku's motives and the staff and Nezu was confused. No, we would have seen him early in the morning within the southern district but problem child never visited there. Aizawa scooted closer to the monitor placing a hand on his chin. It didn't make sense why Izuku would lead Bakugu there. They knew one simple gunshot could have taken Bakugu out so clearly Izuku had something else in mind. Watching the chase Bakugu wasn't really closing the distance between the two but something changed that as Bakugu closed one of his hands making a small circle before explaining his other hand behind it. Recognizing the move Aizawa stood up. As Bakugu fired an AP shot heading towards Izuku who had dodged it by a hair the blast piercing through an apartment building where luckily no students were seen. Bakugu is trying to make his promises reality. Nezu said this out loud as the teachers looked at the damage as Bakugu kept attacking hitting civilian buildings. If Midoriya was hit by that attack it would have some severe damage perhaps even life-threatening not only that but his attacks are hitting civilian buildings he can be killing entire families. Nezu we need to eject Bakugu from the game. He just tried to kill Midoriya. Aizawa looked at Nezu and back at the screen the other teachers were agreeing. No, Midoriya did this on purpose. He's showing us who Bakugu really is. Chuckling Nezu smiled while the teachers all looked at him confused. Midoriya, I may be a hybrid but you're a fox. Nezu, start making sense now. Alright Aizawa I'll explain. Midoriya has shown us who Bakugu is. And is shoving it into our face who we allowed into the hero program with no regulations. We even placed Midoriya next to the boy in your class Aizawa. He's telling us not only does Bakugu not care for anyone but himself. But also how if they weren't in UA Bakugu wouldn't hesitate to kill Midoriya. 
Let's keep watching. Let Midoriya expose our student hound dog you'd best be creating a plan for Bakugo he will be your longest patient within your career. The teachers despite wanting to stop Bakugo listened watching as Izuku dropped to street level around civilians as Bakugo followed after him. It was then Nezu's expectations were held up. Bakugo didn't relent in attacking Izuku. He didn't even hesitate or stop even when he had started hitting civilians killing them with his AP shot screaming die but Izuku's plan was starting to make sense as robots started recording yelling for Bakugo to stop before Izuku also yelled out. Stop. Please. Oh shit. Present Mike just stared at the screen he along with everyone around him had realized what this was. He doesn't want to snuff out the light of hope he wants to replace it. Nezu's early statement made perfect sense. Bakugou's actions, attitude, disregard the civilian life was everything a psychopathic villain would be and do. This was only cemented as Izuku spoke the teachers hearing his words. Mei did you get enough? Of course how could they forget about Mei? Looking the girl was still on the computer giddy while clicking keys on her keyboard views from the city cameras on her screen as she spoke into the computer. Yep, this will definitely work now to your stuff, but I want something in return. Ignoring Mei's flirting in the situation they turned back to Izuku who responded. Alright, whatever you want. Yeah, it was after one last attack that Izuku had stopped dodging yelling out for Bakugo to stop that there was no reason to kill the innocent civilians. Aizawa sat there in his chair silently praying. Bakugo, remember the situation don't do it. Unfortunately there wasn't any god to answer his prayer as Bakugo yelled out. Shut the fuck up you shitty fucking waste of space. These aren't real people they're just getting in my way to fuck you up. Jesus fucking Christ. Putting his head down Aizawa gave up all hope and this abandonment of hope was only furthered with what happened next. Surprisingly Izuku put his hands up walking forward while claiming he was willing to turn himself in as he reached a manhole cover. This is it Bakugou could end the game here. Present Mike had a smile on his face but it froze in place as Bakugou's face contorted in rage pure unadulterated rage. Bakugou putting his hands together aimed at Izuku, shut the fuck up and die. The largest explosion the teachers had ever seen, bigger than even the sports festival. How the spectator room rumbled as the aftershocks of the explosion destroying buildings and killing pavilions was felt all the while it headed towards Midori. It was then that the explosion covered Izuku. The teachers all got up recovery girl was ready to rush out as well. Midoriya could be in life-threatening danger from an attack like that but as they got to the door Nezu spoke. Don't leave. Nezu the poor boy could be severely injured I need to get down there. Recovery girl didn't even look at Nezu as she said that but Nezu said something that froze each of them. Midoriya is fine. It's the hero team you should worry about. Turning the teachers saw the smoke from Bakugou's attack fade before Izuku stood standing there not even a glint of damage on the boy as a melted and smoking manhole cover was seen next to Izuku. Before the boy started speaking tears leaking out of his eyes. H how could you? Izuku's face turned to anger. The staff watched Izuku flip through personalities like it was nothing and seeing as the boy wasn't hurt at all they all sat down wondering where this was going to go. Izuku then screamed out asking why Bakugu would do any of this but Bakugu didn't seem to care except for one thing. How the fuck did you survive that you shitty Deku? The staff were again disappointed, did we really allow a student like this in my class? Aizawa shook his head. Izuku however didn't answer that question instead he claimed he would save the civilians and stop Bakugu which made the explosion student grin wickedly. Izuku then rushed the boy striking Bakugu in the stomach after dodging an attack sending Bakugu back and making the boy spit out blood and saliva. Midoriya is still holding back. Nezu although he recognized the amount of strength in Izuku attack his instincts were telling him it was just a scratch of what he could really do. At that moment Izuku's plan this entire time came to fruition. The civilians were yelling at Bakugu calling him a murderer while pleading for Lucifer to save them. He really did it. It's only the afternoon yet Midoriya has turned everyone against Bakugu hound dog was impressed. Izuku was scarier than he initially thought. Not only did Izuku have control over his emotions to an insane degree he could manipulate a crowd like nothing. The best thing Hound Dog can compare this to was the way people had looked up to All Might. While Toshinori inspired hope Izuku can do it faster, better and that's with just using the situation to his advantage. Bakugo wasn't a friendly hero and Izuku as Lucifer was a brutal villain but it all mattered on who saw each side. While the civilians had seen Lucifer kill a few citizens, Bakugo essentially slaughtered them when his job was to protect them. They were forced to think which of the two were the lesser evil. To the civilians the obvious choice was Lucifer. The villain hadn't done anything to them until the heroes showed up and while people have died at the hands of Lucifer he had done so with the intent to send the heroes out of the city promising that no one else would be harmed had the heroes left. Bakugu or Ground Zero was killing just to kill even as Lucifer tried to surrender to stop the bloodshed the hero didn't stop destroying their community and killing so many of their family, friends and acquaintances. Bakugu was a monster, a true villain in their eyes. Tuning back into the fight Hound Dog wrote everything down as Bakugu rushed Izuku going for attacks missing each one. After one more attempt Izuku shot back and into a wall. We all saw that didn't hit right y'all. Snipe made sure his eyes didn't deceive him. Hell he was a gunslinger he knows when and how somebody is hit but nothing had even touched Izuku. This kept happening as Izuku wasn't hit by any attacks yet he kept getting launched into buildings until his suit, 
and hair were covered in rubble, disheveled, and his head was bleeding. Nezu seeing this decided to ask his staff a simple question. Staff I wonder, which type of hero inspires hope within everyone that sees them? The staff all thought about it but they couldn't exactly come up with an answer. Nezu then decided to tell them. A hero that inspires hope within everyone that sees them is a hero that no matter how many times they are knocked down they always get back up. Nezu had a large smile on his face watching as Izuku picked himself up and despite his appearance and injury Izuku reached inside his suit before yelling out to everyone. And no matter how many times you hit me, I'll always get back up. I'll protect you all. Izuku in that moment looked like a true hero even to the staff as the lightning full cowling had lit up brighter arcing stronger and faster. It's like the final power up against a powerful villain. Present Mike smiled it was like those cliche hero movies. The hero always wins. It was then Izuku rushed forward assaulting instead of dodging though the teachers did note Izuku's attacks were held back somewhat. Before Izuku revealed back whip for the first time to Bakugu rapping the boy who accused him of once again being a traitor to Yue. It was then that Izuku placed his foot on Bakugu's neck before speaking to Bakugu. Izuku's voice was cold and ruthless, me a traitor no. I hid this from everyone even the teachers but that's not what I'm here for. All through my life you tortured me, belittled me, crushed me, and for what exactly? Being quirkless. You beat me because I was powerless but let's see how you will like living in the world I had. Izuku increased the pressure he placed on Bakugu's throat and the teachers were afraid that Izuku would just snap Bakugu's neck then and there but he didn't. Instead Izuku kneeled before reacting some of the quirk they named Black Whip before ripping a piece of Bakugu's hero costume exposing his chest. Placing the device May had made. Midoriya just made Bakugu quirkless. Head it's cruel, but as the saying goes an eye for an eye. Nazu sipped some tea he didn't need to explain the other heroes in the room knew what was going on. Izuku had just explained it but it didn't end there as Izuku took off his mask and sane toothy smile and bloody thirsty look on his face. The teachers had goosebumps on their skin as they watched. While they had gotten mostly used to Izuku's grins and smiles it didn't stop their body from reacting. Nezu wasn't an exception as his fur stood on end while Izuku spoke again. Enjoy being quirkless Kachin, it's quite the life, you'll see. The teachers watched as Bakugu tried to activate his quirk when he was unwrapped by Black Whip only to jolt and shake in pain with a look of fear on his face and in his eyes. Bakugu kept trying to pry the device off yelling for Izuku to take it off only getting a laugh out of the villain. Izuku then exclaimed his defeat of the hero but before a celebration could commence with the cheers of civilians the earpiece that Izuku had stolen from Bakugu went off the heroes converging on his location. It was then Izuku took off with OFA and Black Whip making his way to the hero HQ and the day had come to a close. With that guys I hope you enjoyed this part and see you next time bye bye.